Hello friends. So today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to build out a to-do list in raw JavaScript. Why a to-do list you might ask? Because it's the most basic kind of DOM manipulative JavaScript that you can do to where you can actually see something that you're building and get into kind of a, a workflow. Uh, usually on my channel I do a lot of algorithmic JavaScript. I do a lot of kind of data structures, algorithms, shit like that. I don't necessarily do uh, a lot of things that would be in the sphere of like web development or, or anything like that. Uh, I definitely never never work with the DOM, things like that. So I'm going to start doing more of that. Uh, and uh, this is this will be like one of those first lessons in that. And if you can build a to-do list pretty well, that's a good first step. Like if you're a beginner and you're, you're wanting to just get something that you can get up and off the ground to where it's like, hey, I actually built something that does something. Uh, to-do lists are a really good, uh, a really good starting point. Like to-do lists or like uh, card games of some type. I, I, I made a tutorial about building out a tic-tac-toe game a couple of years ago, and uh, and that's all for like beginner type stuff. To, the, like when I'm teaching people how to program, I usually teach them this kind of stuff first. So let's get to it. Uh, the only thing that I have is an index HTML, a main CSS, and a main.js, and uh, yeah, we'll get to this. It might take maybe two videos because uh, it might take two videos, so we'll see. So let's make our HTML page here real quick. Boom. Not bad. And we'll call it to-do to list uh, in raw.js. Boom. Okay. So now... Let's just make an H1 here. It says testing, just to make sure that we can link up our stuff right. So under this meta tag, do a link, and this will be main.css, and then down here we'll put our script tag, script, and here the SRC is gonna equal main.js. All right, so let's save this, and I'm gonna be using live server to run this, uh, to run this on my uh, local host. So just right click, open with live server. Live server you can you can install into uh, VS Code without many problems. So here's our page that we got so far. Cool, so that's working. Uh, we need to make sure our CSS is working. So let's go in here, target that H1, and we'll just say color is gonna be red, just to make sure that it works. There we go. So that's working, and let's click here and inspect console. Uh, because we didn't put anything in our JavaScript. So we'll just say CLG, working, and it's working. Okay, cool, so everything's linked up properly. Now, let's get to coding here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just build out our HTML skeleton. So let's just do a container, and I'm gonna do all of this in raw CSS. I'm not gonna use Bootstrap or anything like that. We'll just style it as we go. It's not gonna be like overly styled crazy, but it'll, uh, We'll do it all in raw CSS. So the first thing that we're gonna need is kind of like a logo. So let's go logo. And within that logo, uh, I guess we'll just have uh, uh, raw or to-do list in raw JS like that. Okay, looks like crap. So let's go to logo. And let's style it real quick. Font size, we can do, I don't know, like five room. I want it to be kind of big. So cool, uh, that font family sucks. So what I usually do is just a quick browser reset. And I'll just say padding, zero, margin, zero, box sizing, border box. This adds in your margin and padding, uh, box sizing, border box. And let's do a font family of uh, Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. Okay, cool, so it looks like that. It still looks bad, but, so remember that container that we put on there? Let's do something with that. We'll say width will be, uh, I don't know, we'll do like 60%. And then we'll do the uh, margin auto, right? So that'll center the container. We'll give this container a border 
of 1px solid red. And this is just for testing. We're going to take this border away. But you can see that that's the length of our container. So if we do uh, text align on this logo, we do center here. That'll center it up. Cool. We want to get it off the... I want to get this container off the top of the page, so I'll go margin top will be another 5 rim just to get it off the top of the page. Cool. So that's what we got so far. Uh, I want to give this background uh, a different color though. So we'll go background up here uh, and the color is going to be just an off-white F4. Cool. Then we'll give a regular default color. Oh wait, did that not go through? Back. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now it's that off-white, cool. It's subtle, but you can, you know. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is let's give it a color of uh, some kind of black. Kind of an off-black. These are real tiny, subtle changes. Uh, and we need some kind of a highlight color, so here we can just go to color hunt, and let's, I like that as an off, as a highlight, there we go, so we copied that, and we'll just say highlight, we're going to equal this, put our hash there, there, and we'll change this to, actually let's make a variable for this. dash dash highlight equals that and then here we can make a variable for it bar dash dash highlight this will be our border so now our border has that color cool uh, that's fine uh, this is this is fine just how we got it because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the uh, on the styling so uh, to do this in raw JS we have it within the container. So the next thing we need is a, is a form that we can interact with and we'll give this an ID. ID equals form. And then we can do an input right here and we need a text field for the input and we'll give this an ID of input. And then we need an input with a type submit and we'll give this an ID equal to input. Right? Okay, cool. So we got this, which looks terrible. So let's go here. And I'm going to try to keep this in alphabetical order. But when it's just one big CSS file like this, it's, you know, it, 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 this is just a quick project, so it can get kind of sloppy. So ID is going to be input, not here as well. Input, this will be submit. So we have an input and a submit. So let's style the input. Uh, we'll just give it a width of, I don't know, I guess 100% we can try that, and then we can stretch it all the way across, like that, and then we'll give it a padding, or a, a font size of 1.4 rim. We need a placeholder in there as well, actually. Uh, let's put a placeholder in here. Index on this input placeholder is going to equal uh, enter a task. Okay, and uh, let's give it a little bit of padding. Padding 0.4 rim. Okay, so it's got a little padding there. Uh, let's take this border away because now we know we know the, the size of the container. So it looks like that. Let's take the borders away from this and then we'll just put a bottom border back on. So right here we'll go border, none, and then border, bottom, 1px solid, and we'll do that bar dash dash highlight. Okay, so now we have that and we'll do a little bit of margin top, uh, one rim. Move it down a little bit, that's cool. That's fine. Now let's style that submit button. So under logo, go to submit. And we'll give it a background of that highlight. 
cool. Uh, and we'll do the color of that F4, F4, F4. We can make a variable for that too. I just haven't yet. And we'll do padding or font size 1.4 rim. Uh, we'll do padding. Uh, let's just try one rim. Cool. And we'll do a little bit of margin top of uh, 0.5 rim just to get it off a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's fine. Uh, we also want the border to be none here. And then, do we want a border radius? No, nah, it's fine. We'll just do a hover state for it. So submit hover. And we'll do, on the hover, we want the opacity to go to 0.7. And uh, yeah, that's fine. And we want the cursor to be a pointer. Cursor, pointer. So that's just fine and subtle. We can actually transition that really easy. So we'll go opacity 0.3 S ease and then we'll go um, yeah that's fine. So it's it's got a very subtle real subtle. Uh, when I click on this I don't want there to be a border. So let's go to input focus. When it's focused I want the outline to be none. So let's see. Okay, so there's no outline on it, but I also want to, uh, whenever it's focused on, I want the padding to go from 0.4 to 0.8 rim, and I want to transition that padding 0.3 s ease. So we should get a nice subtle little, yeah. So that's fine. So that's that's good for the for the form input right there. That's fine. So now the next thing that we need after that form is we're going to need basically whenever we click submit, we're going to need a place to put the to dos that we create. We're going to dynamically create the to dos with our JavaScript, but we need a place to put them. So down here, I'll make a ul and I'll give this an id of list. Whoops, id of list. And that's not going to show up right now, but let's, for styling sake, let's put a false, like a dummy li in there and say like, this is a list item. So this is what it's going to look like when the to-dos pop up. So let's style that real quick. And let's give this a class of list item. List dash item. Cool. So let's go to our CSS. Let's target the list. And the list is going to have a, uh, let's see, margin top of one rim. That's fine. Uh, font, oh, well, well, we'll do that on the uh, list items. Uh, list style is going to be none. So it takes away the bullet point. And then let's do, do we need, no, that's fine. Let's do the list dash item and let's give it a font size of 2 rim uh, font style of italic and then a border bottom of I guess 3px dotted with the highlight let's see how that looks probably gonna look like crap. Uh, it looks okay. And let's give it a little bit of padding. So padding uh, 0.4 rim. Um, let's put a couple more in there and see how that would look. Like I said, these are just, these are just dummy elements and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the styling. So, so let's get a little bit more padding. Uh, let's just say just straight up one rim. Okay. Um, this is fine. That's fine. That's fine. So we have a container. We have a, a form input here, and then we have a place to where we're going to put our 
we're going to put our uh, to-dos. And there will be a clear button that will pop up here, maybe a filter bar that will pop up at some point. But for right now, this is, this is fine to start out with. So let's get rid of, in our HTML, let's get rid of these list items because that's what we're going to be generating with our JavaScript. So what we're going to need here when you're building this is you'd be like, okay, what am I going to need to grab in my JavaScript? I know I'll need to grab this input. I know I'll probably need to grab this form as a whole, and I know I'll need to grab this button. I'll probably also need to grab that list that's not showing up right now. So let's go into our JavaScript. Not that. In there. And we'll go uh, const list equals document dot query selector. And we're going to give, we're going to grab the list. Const form equals document dot query selector. And we'll grab the form. Uh, what else? Const input equals document dot query selector. And we'll grab that input. Now let's copy this. And this is going to be submit. And we'll be grabbing that with submit. OK. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is add some event listeners. Uh, I don't like keeping event listeners in the global scope of the uh, JavaScript file. So let's make a function called add or called load event listeners. And what that's going to do is take in all of our event listeners. So let's go to this form and we'll add an event listener there. And we're going to be waiting for a submit. So when a submit is clicked on this form, we're going to want to do something. That'll be add to do. That'll be our function that it's going to run. So let's go add to do right here. Whoop. That's going to take in an event parameter. So let's go e.preevent default to prevent the default behavior. And just for right now, let's console log uh, working. So let's click on this submit button and see if it's working. For, in order for this to work, we're going to have to run our load event listeners as the first thing that happens lexically within the uh, within the execution context of the uh, file. So let's go load event listeners and just invoke it. So that should load this event listener. And then when we click on it, this add to do should console log working if everything goes properly. So let's open up our console. And let's just click on that submit button and see what happens. Boom. All right, cool. So it's working. I also don't want this to outline whenever I click on it. So let's go back to here. And let's go back to that submit button. Where's that? Submit, hover, uh, submit, focus. And we'll just say outline, none. So let's click working and it doesn't outline cool all right so that's the basics of setting up our ui and then starting our javascript file that'll be the end of the first video and then the next video that i make will be should i just do it all in one video no i probably won't be able to so that's the end of the first video the next video we'll write the javascript and uh get this done all right take it sleazy